Aha, you guys thought I wasn't going to do it. I keep going later and later. It's like 8.15. I usually start at like 8. Even late, it was like 8.08. .08. Now it's 8.15. I just get busy. You guys know how it goes. You just get crazy busy and you get behind. Let's see. Let's set up a couple things here. Hey, Brad. I'm, I'm a little behind getting set up here. I kind of rushed home. There's Craig, Tennessee Mike. Yeah, I seen you guys chatting in the uh, our little chat group and stuff like that, asking if there was going to be a live. Yeah, I'm just late. <laughs> I'm just late to get started on it. You guys probably already watched the unboxing of that. I'll have to do a full video on that. Let's see. Excuse me. Wow. I'm just getting settled in, guys. Eric's checking in from Lock Lomond. I don't even know what that is. The Time Flipper's checking in. Uh, let's see. Here's a question. You think a thousand euros for the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Mark III GMT is a good value? Um, yeah, I'm actually a big fan of the Christopher Ward Mark III. Is they're they're really good. So, I mean, if you if you're in the market for one and you want to spend a thousand bucks on one, then do it. Lyndon's asking. Uh, me, are you asking me to spend your $1,500 work bonus? I can't decide what to get. Have you tried a Zen 104? I think if you have not tried a Zen 104, that's 1500 or I think that's about what they are, uh, money well spent. Happy Monday to you as well, Terry. Thanks for chiming in. Let's see. Uh, Loom Shot's checking in. Loom Shot blew up. He got mad props, notification, uh from a, a big YouTuber, so his, his channel kind of blew up a little bit. Eric's in Scotland. Let's see, what else we got here? I'm behind, I'm behind, I'm trying to catch up. Jeffrey's made it two weeks in a row for the live show. David is asking the Zodiac Grand Rally thoughts. I have not looked that one up, I'll have to look that one up. Hey Desmond, Dustin finally made it in. Blue Shirt Buddha's here. Uh, what's the best diver for around the thousand euros? I don't know what the conversion is on a thousand euros. Oris, get an Oris. Yes. Oris is very good. Or some micros. Lyndon, you already have a Zen 104. Do you want to spend $1,500 on another watch? Um, I don't know. I've been kind of like doing non-divers. Have you thought about doing a non-diver? Like an Oris big crown pointer date? Or maybe, um, you know, it's going to be less, but like a, a Stova Flieger, uh, manual wine, something like that. Or, I mean, heck, you could even buy a Weiss watch or something like that. Do Maybe look at non-divers. Take a break from divers for a minute. Design Atelier. I'm not sure if that's right now. What do I think of the new Frogman? I'm kind of with my buddy Michael, Desire68 on this. I'm not digging the analog. I'll... I'll I'll be slightly reserved and wait to see when I actually get my hands on one, but I'm kind of not digging it. Uh, let's see. My buddy Doug is checking in. Let's say a thousand. Okay, so let's say a thousand dollars. All right, let me catch up on comments here. Um, so let's say a thousand dollars. What's your top pick for around that price point in the diver category? Um, a titanium square. Um, let's see. Yeah, the comments were kind of blowing up there. Oh, wow. Guys, help me answer this. $1,000 for a diver, and we're assuming new price, not used. Let's, let's do new price, $1,000. Best diver, $1,000. Mm. Everything I keep thinking of is like under 1000 So like there's the, I was actually looking at the, um, well, the Oris Aquas is more than a thousand, though. New, new, right? So, 
even Doxa's more. Well, you can get the Doxa sub two hundred. If the Doxa sub two hundred works, that's a thousand dollars. That's a good. That's a good option. Uh, Squally one five two one is pretty cool. Ward obviously Ward would be a good choice. That's going to be under a thousand. Uh, also, what was I looking at earlier? The Mito Ocean Star Titanium. Those are can be had for around six eighty. Those are pretty cool. Yep, the Mito Ocean Star. Yeah, there's some options out there under under a thousand. You know, if you want to go above a thousand, then yeah, that jumps you into like <laughs> Terry says two Steinhardt. Okay. So what's the best flipper watch right now, you think? Oh, to just buy and flip and not lose money? Buy and flip and not lose money. Buy and flip and not lose money. Um Limited edition Seiko, usually not going to lose money or not lose much money. Um, the Zen 104s, you're not going to lose any money or very little. Um, yeah, limited edition G-Shock squares, you will do okay on. Yeah, if you're full flipper mode, yeah, it's. I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I straight up lose money on my flips. Like, I don't even hide the fact. I either break even if I'm lucky or I straight up lose money. Uh, oh, the Certina DS Action Diver Turtle. Okay, so that brings up another one. And I have not checked out this watch, but there's another... Another Mito... The Tribute Watch. I think it's the Ocean, Ocean Star Tribute Watch. They have two colorways, and the green one looks really cool. That would be a really cool one as well. I don't know what the price tag is on them, but that would be a cool one. And I think you would that would hold its value. I don't I don't know how many they made of those. So Ocean X Shark Max. Hmm. So I am gonna open a box. So I'm I'm gonna ignore your questions for a second. Uh, oh yeah, Seiko tuna. If you're gonna get a Seiko tuna, and just just my opinion though, get get the non-normal one. So like get the like SBBN 037, I think, which is the blue one, or the 039, which is the patty. Um, you're gonna pay more for it, but those ones are really cool. Alright, so this package was sent over by a longtime friend of mine, the other RS, Mr. Robert. And this watch is gonna have a story. I I'm going to probably take a little bit of a break from the unboxings. I know some people like them, but. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, Zodiac Diver. That would be a good one. All right, so I have a very cool watch that my buddy is my buddy's personal watch. This is the Omega Seamaster, the electric blue. Um, and hopefully I can catch some light and you can see that. This has the wave pattern on it. It's the electric blue. It has the sword hands. I forget the model number of it. Um, 225 something. I don't know. But it has the nice, it's the, um, you know, nice bracelet. And he wore this. I mean, my buddy Robert wore the heck out of this. Um, just a, just a great, I mean, if, and if you can find actually for around a thousand dollars or even 15, um, you can find some really good examples of these older Omega Seamasters. And they are phenomenal watches. Phenomenal. So, but my buddy Robert sent this in. He, he sent this in not that long ago, really, for a full service. I believe he sent it to Omega. And, oh man, they're so thin. They're such a good watch. Um, and he had it, nice bezel action, too. He had it redone, and it worked great. And then recently... It just died. It won't wind. Like, you can hear the rotor turn, but it doesn't wind. You can, let's see, this will be my first try of it. Let me see if I can hear it. So I can turn the crown and I can hear the clicking. So there's resistance on it, but and I can hear the, the ratcheting inside. But the watch won't run. So I don't know... So these, I forget the caliber these use, but essentially this caliber is an ETA 2892, kind of, right? And 
from what I've known, they could potentially have a mainspring issue. So we're hoping that's the case. So I'm going to do a video on it and do a story on it, and then I'm going to send it out to Bruce, and then hopefully Bruce will take it to his uh, watchmaker guy and get it fixed. No, it's not for sale. This is going to be... This one's going to be um, full repaired, and we're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about the concept of, you know, should you fix your watch? In this case, I mean, it's almost always going to be the yes. The answer is going to be yes. It's an Omega Seamaster. Fix the darn thing, right? Don't do what Robert was doing. He just set it in the drawer off to the side and was like, um, and it should be fine. Yeah, it's Terry. Yes, it's Robert Sears. This is his watch. So we're going to... We're going to talk about it. We're going to get, you know, not on this live, we already did, but we're going to talk about it on a separate video. We're going to talk about the concept of, you know, potentially even like buying a watch maybe that is in damaged affair like this. And um, yeah, it is almost 20 years old, but it's been redone. And he sent me the paperwork. I'm not going to share the paperwork with you because it has too much of his information on it. But I can look at it real quick. It has the full paperwork. He just had this service. Let me look at the dates on it. And he did have it done at Omega. It has the caliber 1120. Um, he spent $550 according to this receipt. So $550 full service. Which I'm sure... So the movement had low amplitude. So they fixed that, whatever that is. And it wasn't performing within factory specifications. So I'm assuming they replaced the mainspring when they did it. So maybe something involved with the way it's done. So maybe they goofed it up. When was this done? This was done in 2017. And it was running at plus 3.3 seconds. So the mainspring on this thing is actually captured in this uh, little case. And it has a cap on it. There's a chance that maybe... It came off the center shaft or the thing came off or something uh, and it's just not allowing the mainspring to like wind and, and function properly so um, hopefully it'll be a semi easy fix yeah baller watch not really though i mean you're talking about four thousand ish i mean you can go over to del rey right now i think they're probably one of the better prices and they're sourcing it from nad um the, these white ones are like 4200 I, I'm not saying that's not a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But these guys here, you can pick these up on the regular, like, I don't know, 800 bucks, 700 bucks. And then these right here, um, in good, fully working condition, what, a couple grand? So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of baller. But if you think about it, you probably have a watch box full of watches that you could sell and go buy one of these. Yeah. Yeah, we're poking at t Tennessee Mike to go pick up his uh, Seamaster. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Rob, what's the best website to buy mod parts for the SKX? And you think it makes sense to buy original spare parts for SKX since they won't be available for long anymore? Um, you, I mean, you can build them a la carte. You can build a, a whole complete watch without ever even buying Seiko parts, really, at this point. I personally liked, uh, what is it, DLW... Um, Crystal Times is good. Uh, I don't want to leave any out. I'm trying to remember all the ones I was using. Uh, Namoki's is good. I'm trying to think. There was another one. Um, Loom Ceramic Bezel Inserts. If you want to do that kind of bezel insert, that's really good. Sapphire. So, But you don't even have to buy the SKX. You can just buy a case from somebody and just build the whole thing. Oh, like keep your SKX. Okay, so that is a good question. And let me grab mine. So I have a bone stock SKX. Hey, Billy Bob. So I have a bone stock SKX, and this is not the JDM one. This is um, the K model or whatever. This was a gift from my buddy Michael, Desire68. Big thanks to Mike. And I'm keeping this one bone stock. Like I could easily, yeah, I could easily, I keep even the, the, I have other, I have like Angus Jubilee, I have uh, the Super Jubilee, I have the Uncle Seiko Razor Blaze bracelet, I have all of that stuff, but I'd like to have one, let me grab a modded one, I, I like to keep it bone stock, so if you were, listen, if you're an SKX, Seiko SKX fanboy, right, I am, you are, right, well, a lot of us are, 
I think, yes, you should have a bone stock 009 or a bone stock uh, 007. But also, do a full-on crazy build. Do both. But don't have 10 SKX. Do one that's specced out exactly the way you want it, like my buddy Homer did with this, and then have your bone stock one. And they're, they're so different, but yet it's the same chassis. This is an actual SKX case on this one, but you could go with an aftermarket one to have the drilled lugs and all that stuff. But the weight on this with the Angus and then the extra parts and everything, the weight on it is just totally different. That is a phenomenal watch, but that's, you know, the bone stockers are a phenomenal watch. So I think keep get a bone stock, really good condition, 009 or 007, and keep it bone stock and just enjoy it for what it is. And then build or have one spec built for you. There's people out there that will build them for you. Build a ground up non-SK, non-Seiko parts one, maybe source a dial or something or kill a turtle. I'm all about killing those turtles, just do that. There, now we have, we have affordable and then we have expensive. Do you have any for sale? Do I have what for sale? I don't, I have, yeah, I have watches that will be I didn't do a Sunday sale this, you know, yesterday. I'll do one this Sunday coming up. Somebody asked if I was drinking and what. It's, um, I'm drinking juniper berries. Let's see. Hey, Rob, great fan of your work. Well, we could just stop right there, I guess. That pretty much sums it all. No, we'll finish. Can you suggest a watch that has a date window at 6 p.m., not as expensive as an Aqu Oh, man, I was going to say Aquaterra, too. But not as expensive as an Aquaterra. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. No, I don't have any SKX for sale. Sorry. Yes, James. Um, I didn't even have to. Thanks for pointing all that Macy's deal out. I didn't even have to. The, my Patreon group was on it. They were on it. One of them probably picked up one of those squares. Um. Yeah, the Aquaterras are really nice. I'm actually kind of lusting towards either Aquaterra or Railmaster, but I'm not going to be spending that kind of money. So where's the squares at? Um, yeah, we can throw a square out here. Let's throw... Well, let's throw the Tron out there for visual effect. Let's throw the Tron over here just for visual effect. Just one. I did... So the last live, I, I had like... It was almost all squares out here. So let's just do one square. Okay, so Zealous Mako has a six. There's, I don't know, there's micros out there that are going to have it. Um, oh, I got one for you. The Nomos Club 733. You can get the 731 or the 733. They're kind of pricey, but not Aquaterra pricey. They use an actual in-house movement. It's hand wine, and it's their actual in-house movement. It's, uh, I forget the number, like DW401 or something like that. Um, I've actually been lusting over that no more, so it's actually a sweet watch. Let's open another package real quick, so. Let's see here. Those new Seiko, oh, Knife Watch wants to know, man, I want to know what you think about those new Seiko 5s that just dropped market line. I don't know, they look pretty good. I'm not gonna buy one, but if somebody wants to send them in, I'll check them out, but I'm not buying one. Yeah, the Notice Retrospect, actually, that would be a very affordable 6, six o'clock uh, date. So where was this one from? Let me see. Oh, sweet. I'm not even going to tell you where this one's from. You'll, ju you'll just see. What is this? Use for return. Okay. So this is a loaner, a loaner watch that will be returned. I'll unveil it here. I'm not going to do, uh, like I said, I'm kind of chilling out a little bit on the, you guys know that packaging, right? Actually, I just had one of these on the show not too long ago. Uh, Bobby Legs got the Gemini in and we shared it. If I get a couple more drinks in me, guys, I'll tell you. Sorry for the noise. All right, let's let's unwrap this guy. Let's see what we have. Ooh. 
So it's the blue with gilded. If I can find the. So there we go. Yep. These are so good for people with like that either like smaller watches or you know have to wear a smaller watch just because of the wrist size. These Laurier's are really good. I like these. So we'll put that guy right there. Full video to come soon on that. Just like I always say with everything, I'm always super far behind on everything. Gerald's checking in. Hey. Hey, no one asked for a wristwatch check, did you? You guys probably already seen it, though. I showed this watch to my buddy Adam today, and he he laughed at me and said, this is literally the ugliest citizen watch he's ever seen. So that made me realize that this was perfect for me if Adam thinks it's the ugliest watch ever. Then it's definitely the right watch. Ivan, I will have one, if not all three, of the GBX 100. As soon as they land in the United States to the ADs, I will have them in on the show. Let's see. James is asking, just like folks want the Tudor Black Bay 36 for the Snowflake cans, people will want the smaller Seiko 5. Yeah. Yep, that's why there's so many watches. So we can all get what we want. Have I heard of Titan Edge watches? No. Indian brand. Nope. I have not heard of them. GBX 100. Yeah, the displays look really cool. You could probably buy that. 50, I don't know. He's still into the G-Shocks, though. Uh, Ivan, I answered your question. I have not physically checked out the GBX 100, but I will as soon as they come in. Uh, let's see. So this strap, guys, I have to tell you, I did the video on the, the um, Strap Mill Canada straps. This thing is, oh man, it is so good. So good. Um, it's a vulcanized rubber strap. It's insanely comfortable. I wore it all day today. Did some heavy work. And I never even had to adjust it. It stayed exactly put on my wrist. You know, sometimes you have to, your watch will try to roll over on you and you got to push it back. I put this on this morning and it never moved. It stayed perfect positioning. I'm absolutely in love with this strap. I'm probably gonna order a couple. Um, they they gifted, you know, they sent me these, they gifted them to me, but I think I'm gonna order a couple for inventory just so I can pop them on other watches. The strap is that good. Oh, excuse me. I have other boxes, but I don't really wanna open them. So let's just talk. Let's see, Mario says, I'm tempted by the Seiko Shogun or the Transatlantic, any inputs. The Shogun is awesome. If you've not checked out the Shogun in, I don't know, it works totally fine on my seven and a quarter. And I know guys that wear it even with like uh, down to like six and three quarter inch wrist. It's so light and the finishing on the titanium of the Shogun is so good. I have not checked out the Transatlantic one, but the Shoguns are very good. Uh, let's see, Robert is asking, Rob, really like, really enjoy your shows. What is the best way to send you watches to review and sell? I want to sell some of my watches to purchase the Omega. Oh, yeah, he wants to go for the Omega Seamaster. Robert, um, send me an email and we can talk. But, yeah, I mean, I got to be careful with taking on too much stuff. But send me an email and we'll talk. Uh Steve Kelly saying, Rob bought a Rolex last year, Luke. I did? Oh, yeah. I did have a Rolex, and I sold it. Ha ha. Let's see. Um, let's see. Best mechanical watch besides Hamilton. That Nomos mechanical movement is sick. It's in-house, full of in-house design. It's not a replica of another movement. They, like, did it themselves. So I would say that Nomos is really sweet. Um, that Weiss special materials, that's a remake of like a, um, an old ETA movement, watch movement, but it's still really cool. The lug to lug on the Shogun scares you. It's it's the Seiko magic though. It is longer, but 
Um, you can usually wear it. I'm, I think the lug to lug on the Shogun is, it, it's gotta be 50, if not 51. It's, it's pretty long. Yeah, so it's 51. But it's, it's a light watch. Like, I'm all about that titanium. I, I was actually, that's why I ended up looking at that Mito Ocean Star titanium today, because I was looking at a really good titanium watch. I was originally, I started to look again at that titanium Oris Aquas. I still haven't gotten that out of my system, but. Um, so I'd be down for, heck, I even was looking at that, the 007 Seamaster, that's the titanium one. I think it looks great. It's a great looking watch, but I'm not paying nine grand for that. That's ridiculous. Let's see. Rob, have you ever owned an Alpha Paul Newman manual wine seagull movement? I don't know. I don't think so. Luke M Tech. Rob, do you think you'll buy another Omega down the line? Yes. 100% yes. Um, it's, it's either going to be probably like the Aquaterra Golf or I got to go to a, an AD. My issue with some of the Omega that I want are Butterfly Clasp, and I hate Butterfly Clasp, so I I could maybe see I could maybe see doing the Railmaster actually, and maybe either the denim or the Patina one or something like that. We'll see, and then maybe I'll just put it on a vulcanized rubber strap, and I'll be all set. So, um, but it's going to be way down the road, guys. I I have to recover from that. That was, you know, four thousand dollars. That's I don't spend that much on watches. Big thanks to Robert Miller for uh, hooking me up with a super chat, $5. So definitely send me the email, man. You just earned some serious brownie points. <laughs> yeah, send me an email. It's, uh, I usually link, I don't know, you should be able to find my email. I'll put my email in the uh, description of this video once it loads. But, oh, well, actually, it's right there too. Right there. Send me an email. Or you can message me on Instagram. Sometimes that's actually better. If you have Instagram, I would actually prefer you to go over to Instagram, follow me, and then message me on Instagram. I'm more likely to respond quickly. And you can see it's just random Rob underscore YouTube on Instagram. And I'm not, I'm pretty inconsistent with posting up pictures on there, but... Uh, am I predominantly a diver watch guy? Um, I would say initially, yes, I was. In judging by what's on the table here, yes. But, you know, G-Shock squares are not divers. And I, I, yeah, you know, really, I do own mostly divers. But I am really looking at either adding a Flieger, the Stova white dial one is the one I was really looking at. But there's other brands I'm looking at, too. Um... And then I still kind of lust after the Oris. Uh... No, I don't do anything dressy. But honestly, that's part of the reason why I'm kind of shying away from the, the Nomos is because it's almost just a little too dressy for me. But I would definitely rock that, that Weiss uh, Titanium. If I had a spare $2,800 laying around, I would have already bought one of those. I'd be sitting here waiting for it to show up in like six to eight weeks. But... I don't have $2,800. I'm tapped out. So, I mean, I could sell. I could do what I said before. I could upsell. I could sell, like, some of my Borealis. I could sell... Um, I don't, I'm not going to sell any G-Shocks. <laughs> I mean, I could sell a couple watches and probably buy that Weiss, but I really like the watches I have. So I'm not... I, I know a lot of you guys probably struggle with this, but even though I don't... For example, let me let me... This is, this is the watch idiot savant struggle, right? So I have this Borealis Adragos, the white dial. These are kind of hard to get, and I don't wear it. Actually, I can't remember the last time I've even worn it. But I don't want to sell it because I might want to wear it. And I'm still digging the white dial thing. So I don't want to sell that, right? Um, the same thing. Oh, let's see. The same thing with this, the, my Borealis uh, Estoril, Diver's Watch Edition with the big triangle, no date. Um, I just picked this up, well, not just, I picked this up directly from Carlos. He had it, like, hidden away in a vault or something, because these are hard to get, too. And he hooked me up a good deal on it. I bought it, he shipped it, but it was right when all the virus thing was going on. So he shipped it, like, on the slow boat, and it took a month to get it. 
and I wore it for like a couple of days when it first came in and I haven't worn it since. So, you know, the old me, I would have already flipped it, but I, I really want to, I got to hold on to it because it took me a while to track it down and deal with Carlos and, and get it shipped here and everything like that. I, I want to hold on to it. And I've bought and sold a couple of those in the past. And I, this, so this was like a serious rebuy. So I just want to hold on to it. So, I mean, I could, you know, you add these up, you know, there's like 400, there's 400, you know, you start adding all this up and poof, before you know it, there's the $2,800 to buy that Weiss that I want. But then what? Then I had to have the one watch and I'd be missing these. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, uh, the K shape on this is very like Omega, th what was the model? Just Omega 300 or something. It's very like vintage Omega looking. And really, it kind of even slightly reminds me of the Doxa Sub 200. But after having the Doxa Sub 200, this is actually a better watch. Other than the fact that it doesn't have an ETA in it. If Carlos would have put an ETA in this, this would kick the Doxa Sub 200 butt up and down the street. No problem. This has the uh, Miyota 9019 or, or whatever. 15, I mean. Bezel action is better and a better construction. Uh, the loom blows away the Doxa. Um, the bracelet is really good, but the beads of rice on the Doxa is really cool too. So, and these are half the money of a Doxa sub. The Doxa subs are cool. The Doxa sub 200 is cool. If you have an extra thousand bucks laying around and you want to try one out, do it. Cause they are actually legit cool. Uh, um, which, are you calling this one the Great White? Is this, or are you talking about the Act? Because I think, didn't they call the Great White the GMT one? Or are you talking about this one? Oh, Hector's here. Um, let's see. Oh, they, yeah, that's your watch, Hector, right there. I knew you sent me something. Yeah, this Seamaster. So here's the deal, yeah. This one, Luke. Um, I don't know if the same thing happened to you. But this watch kind of, I don't know, and it's, it's, I'm past the honeymoon phase with it, so it's not honeymoon. Like, this watch just makes most other watches at whatever price range seem just kind of silly. Like, they don't seem worth going for the hunt when I already have nailed the big game, I think. Let's see, a time flipper. Rob, I'm thinking of getting the Tag Aqua, Aqua Racer 41 automatic white dial looks amazing thoughts on it i do like the white dial i think it looks great but i think that has the metal bezel right not the ceramic <laughs> extra thousand yeah i know i kind of just said that like very nonchalantly but i i realize a thousand dollars is still a lot of money but again if you have like five of these micro brands sitting around and you're not wearing them, and you want to try that thousand or fifteen hundred dollar watch, sell them, flip it, move it, go try the other watch. Like, the, like, what are you really out? You can buy these again later, or there's always more watches coming out that you're gonna want. You can hunt for those later. Try that next level. See if you like it. Maybe you don't like the fifteen hundred dollar watch. Maybe you don't like the four thousand dollar watch. But you're never gonna know unless you try it. Like, because even me, yeah, so, like, Terry picked up that Black Bay 58, and, yeah, that was a stretch. I mean, she had spent a lot of money on a lot of different watches, and even, you know, the $2,000, $2,500 range, but, you know, jump on up to the Tudor Black Bay 58, especially if you have a smaller wrist, that's a home run watch. That is a legit like, it's going to make a lot of other watches just sit in your watch case. You are going to wear that watch. You're going to put it on different straps. You're going to put it on elastic straps. You're going to put it on the bracelet. Get one of these, Terry. Pick up one of these. Seriously, one of these straps on that Black Bay 58 would be sweet. This is the uh, Strap Mill Canada um, vulcanized rubber. So good. I could see one of these on a Black Bay 58. And they're like 55 bucks. So, um Plus my discount. I think there's a discount. I forget how much off. Oh, let's see. How did it go with those Seiko 5 mods? The That Seiko 5... 
that Seiko 5 kind of kicked my butt. Like I, I tried to put the crystal in. I failed at that. I put the other crystal back in. I ended up selling that watch. I did the bezel, I think. I got the bezel done. And then I did the loomed. Yeah, they're just... Yeah, if you want to mod a Seiko, just go just build an SKX or a Turtle or, or one of those um, Samurai cases. Yeah, Samurai. Yeah, Samurai case. Just build one of those. Don't mess with those Seiko 5s, the low ones. Like, you, you, I think you're going to be let down. Luke says, Rob, do you think I should get the black strap for the Omega? I really like the steel. Um, well, you can see I put mine back on the, the steel, but I do have the Zalandi. These are 175. You can do some colors. You could do the red, the orange. Um, you know, you could have fun with it. Do a white one if you want or the black. These wear really good. If you have not tried, I mean, you could even temporarily try the Strap Mill Canada. I think you're going to get, all right, so here, let's talk about this. Because it's, you know, these $200 straps are pretty ridiculous, right? So we're, I'm talking to Luke right now about, we're talking Omegas here, guys. We're talking Omegas. So paying, you know, $250-ish for the actual Omega one is a lot, right? $175 for the Zalandi seems affordable when it's compared to the Omega, plus you can actually get it, right? Um, and it's fitted, and it's awesome, and it's great, and it's totally worth it. But if you're not sure that you actually want to do a rubber vulcanized rubber strap on your Omega Seamaster, go over to Strap Mill Canada, buy this thing. It's going to end up being like 50 bucks with my discount. Go back to my Strap Mill Canada video. I just did it. I put a discount code in there. Just buy this one. I know it's not going to look as good as the fitted strap, but put one of these on there. It's going to give you the same feel. I wouldn't do the isoframe. I'm telling you guys, get one of these. I've had the isoframe. I have some here. I never wear them. I don't like them. This is better. This is 100% better. The, wow. So you're after the Yacht Master. Um, I'm assuming you mean, yeah, like the build one. I would love to have a Yacht Master with a platinum dial. I love that watch. I'm um, worried about the length of the strap. Yeah, you know what? It's... So here's the deal. It's, oh man, you got the length on this strap though that you can't really change. So yeah, it could be problematic. I mean, you could cut this and sculpt this and even cut new holes in it, but this end is is kind of long too. So yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody makes a shorter one. I could check with Strap Mill Canada, but the, I wonder if the demand is just not there. Maybe I'll ask them. <laughs> yeah 250 for this is like seriously i mean you can get it's gonna feel the same and like yes it doesn't have the fitted end piece here but i mean you're paying 200 dollars for the fitted end piece i get it it's really nice you just spent four thousand on the watch you know what's 250 or even 175 but also it's like 50 bucks and you're probably gonna end up back on the bracelet anyway so you're going to have them put on the uh, vulcanized rubber for like temporarily. Yeah. Maybe just spend the 50 bucks and be done with it. Uh, well, Homer said, Homer said he thinks he paid 250 for the complete assembly. I could not find any legit pricing, but they are sold separately. So you buy the pin buckle and the strap separately and they are pricey. But it's, you know, it's Omega. And I think they're back-ordered anyway because they're not even making them right now. But maybe I should do... I keep saying maybe I should do a video on something, but um, I'm so far behind. I have not tried Vanguard straps. Do they make a vulcanized rubber? I, I'm telling you, this the Strap Mill Canada, I'd, I'd have to compare it to a Vanguard. But hey, Kevin from New York City. Yeah, so they're probably all maybe getting them from the same place, but well, I don't I don't know if it includes the buckle or not. Yeah, don't get don't get the regular rubber. Like even like I'll even show you. So like this is some sort of like regular rubber. It's not even silicone. Um, this is a Strap Mill Canada one, and nothing against them. And I know a lot of people can see merit in this because it has like the vented and everything like that, but it's not vulcanized. It 
it's it's too grippy. It's it's a pain in the butt. Like doing this right here, you can't get it in there, right? These ones don't do that. They they don't they're not sticky. They don't grab lint. Um, they're just more comfortable on wrist. Like I don't know how else to explain it. If you have not tried a vulcanized rubber, like this is <laughs> this is no problem. There's no stickiness or traction to it. If you do real rubber, it's grippy and you can't get it slid in there and it's a pain in the butt and you're just not going to want to wear it. Get the vulcanized rubber. I'm telling you, I don't wear straps traditionally and I don't wear NATOs and I still haven't found a NATO that has fully converted me, but the vulcanized rubber straps, I'm 100% on board with. Omega straps or, or NATO straps are 160. Yeah, pretty good, right? Um, Crafter Blue. Let me grab one. Hold on. I think I have. I think I have a Crafter Blue in here. Hold on a second. Let me look. I think I have one somewhere. So I don't even like the uh, silicone, the Seiko silicone. Okay, so here's a Crafter. The, so the Crafter Blue. It must be, are these vulcanized? Because these feel more like the vulcanized. Yeah, Crafter Blue must be vulcanized or close to it. So I would say a lot of these straps feel like a thinner, more pliable Crafter Blue. Yeah, these must be vulcanized. They have a little bit of stretch to them. There's, the Crafter Blue is thicker than it needs to be. I don't know. I think the new ones too also come with a um, a rubber uh, keeper option instead of the metal. That would be nicer too. I do not like the metal ones. So, but yeah, these these are nice too. I just I think they're too thick. They're thicker than they need to be. They don't need to be like that. This is plenty thick enough, and this is going to be way more comfortable. Well, let's see. Um, for the Sumo. Well, for the Seiko bigger watches like that, maybe the thicker, bigger strap actually makes sense. So I think this would make sense on a Sumo. And it's going to be fitted. I, I would go ahead and do it for the Sumo. Because it's, you know, you got to balance it out some. You can't put a really thin strap on that big watch. see. You guys are all talking to each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of these straps have a lot of, like the, the strap mill doesn't have that much. On my seven and a quarter, you can see it's not. And this is a, sh a shorter lug to lug, so it takes up some of it, but um, no, I have not been carrying is this what you're asking about? No, I started, I was carrying this one and the white one. Actually, I'm going to send the white one back to Billy Bob, but um, I could probably get back to carrying it because I have this one and the full size. But um, I went back to just carrying my Victorinox 58 millimeter, the, the little like mini champs and stuff like that. So I need to get back to carrying these or getting used to using them or something, but... Yeah, Dane, we're all waiting to see your new watch. Hopefully you show us soon. Barton Silicone Elite Strap is also good. Um, they are. Let me grab one. Hold on. They are, but um, it's too slick feeling. And I know that sounds messed up because I just said how this one's not grippy like the regular rubber one. And the, the silicone on the Barton Extreme does work really good. And they're super affordable, and they have some cool options, and it is a really good strap. But I would still pick the vulcanized rubber over this. This would be a close second, though, I will say that. And they do have the notched um, keeper, I think, right? Yeah. So they have the notched keeper in it, which is very slick, like the Omega strap does. Um, actually, the the guy I sold my um, notice to, I need to send the strap to him. I forgot to send this. I need to send that to him. 
I got too much crap, guys. I have way too much stuff. All right, let's see. Where are we at? James taking off. Thanks, James, for checking in. <laughs> the silicone gives you goosebumps. It kind of does, doesn't it? Um, Kevin, yes, I did see a picture today. Um, in another group chat I have, I did see that Oris Chrono. It looks it looks pretty cool. I'm not I'm not really big into the bronze watches, but it does look cool. Let's see. Dane's close to 1,500 subs. If you guys didn't sub to uh, Celine Driver yet, go sub them right now. I'll wait. Oh, yeah. So now this this how I get, just, you guys are just watching to wait for me to cut myself. So you can get a, a live uh, live feed of a guy playing around with a knife that he shouldn't be playing around with and he might cut himself. You guys are just watching to see if I hurt myself. Man, I have not cut myself on a knife in a long time. <laughs> do, do I, let's see. Yeah, and this one would do it. It's sharp. Usually for uh, playing... Why are you scared? It's not even you. This can't do anything to you. If it does anything, it's going to be done to me. And I'm just a, a fictional character on a, on a YouTube channel, so no one's hurt. Oh, let's see. Terry, we just talked about this. The strap that I'm wearing right now is Strap Mail Canada. They don't have any of their branding on this, so I have no idea where they get it from. It's uh, made from... It's vulcanized rubber... Because they have two different ones. It's the non-vented. It's the Strap Milk Canada. Uh, I just did a video on it, actually. So you'll be able to check that video. Out. And I put in the video, I put the discount code for it. And I'm 100% in love on it. I'm old. No, you're not that old. And you can text me after this, too. I can send you a direct link. So you can just click on it on your smartphone. I'll make it super easy on you. And I'll even make it so you can copy and paste... The discount code. I'll make it super easy. Well, it doesn't matter. You you wanted just the name. As soon as this live chat's over, I'm going to text you a direct link and I'm going to text you a copy and paste link for a discount code. Maybe, maybe I'll just buy it and have it shipped directly to you. Miata videos. I didn't buy one. Actually, I just went and looked at a Jeep Wrangler today. I might pick up a Wrangler. Uh, we'll see. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it tomorrow. We'll see. I got to think about it. I'm going to sleep on it. No, I didn't buy the Miata. The only Miata I have is like a little Hot Wheels. I didn't buy it. Orange Wrangler. No, this one's all black and it's the Willis edition. It's a, it's a JK two-door uh, Willis edition. So it's Kind of like a base model sport. Now, I've looked at the Tundras and the Tacomas and stuff before, but the Jeeps are just too dang fun. I have I have a JL. I'm thinking about picking up a uh, JK, So, but in the two-door this time. Yeah, the Forerunners are sweet. They're awesome. I got a bunch of buddies with Forerunners. Most of my buddies don't have Jeeps. They all have, like, Toyotas because they're smart. Um, but <laughs> Prius for sure. Or is, is Brad still here? Yeah, we can take that Prius off-road. Let's go. Oh, let's see. I thought, I bought, I thought you bought one for... You know, oh, check out. This is what my son got. Actually, I should do a video of the car my son got. He got a sweet car. My son picked up the first-generation Honda Fit, and it's lowered down. It's got some sweet wheels on it. It's got the sway bar kit. Um, it's running on teen suspension. The fit is like a perfect slow car, driving a slow car fast fun. It is perfect. Yeah, 
No, the son just picked up the fit. That's good. He's having fun with it. He learned how to drive this, the uh, manual transmission on it um, all on his own. Like he'd driven some like uh, tractors, old um, vintage tractors that were, you know, stick shift, basically. He learned how to drive that fit all on his own. He bought it with his own money and he drove it home from my buddy that he bought it from. Um, like first time he really drove a stick, he, he drove it home. It was awesome. Terry wants the new Ford Bronco. You already have the Jeep. Just keep your Jeep. Yeah, learning how to drive a stick on a test drive. That is so awesome. Um, Luke, Rob, will the Jeep be a, be new if you buy it? No, it's used because it's a JK. So it's a 2016. So it's like four years old. Um... But the reality is what I want it for is I'm going to put a plow on it. I know that sounds messed up, but I'm going to basically make it like a tractor. I went and priced out tractors like, uh, you know, a little diesel tractor with like a snowblower and stuff like that. The one I would want is like $26,000. So I'm just going to buy a Jeep Wrangler and throw a plow on it. Plus I can take it, whatever. I can go do whatever with it. It's a Jeep, right? Ooh, Land Rover Defender. There's a like a Defender, what do they call them? Like a Defender 90 or Defender 80 or whatever. There's one out by me that I keep seeing driving around. It's awesome looking. No, not a weekend. It's going to be for my new driveway. My new driveway, the house that I'm going to build, is going to be ridiculous. It's like steep uphill. And I got, I'm going to have to keep it clear. So. 90 is a small one. It's, it's slick. It is awesome looking. It's a two-door or whatever it is. Land Rover, no. Why are we talking about cars? This is a watch channel, guys. There's a car. Oh, wow. No, in Miami, you do not have to plow snow. You just got to sweep some sand away once in a while. Dane bought his first, first stick manual transmission car without even test driving. That is awesome. The new VAT is killer. Yeah, watches and cars. All mechanical stuff. I mean, look at look at this. Mechanical chronograph. I mean, that's like mechanical on mechanical on mechanical. Like, there's so much going on there. This watch is so cool. I mean, look at the dial on it. There's so much going on on this thing. Let's see if we can get it running. I'm so far behind on videos, guys. I probably shouldn't even be doing these live streams. I should be making videos. I'm legit, like, at least 20 videos behind. Yeah, those value movements are cool. Oh, that's a bummer. You sold the F91. Uh, let's see. Live stream, yeah, the live streams are cool. I look forward to them. I mean, they, they can be stressful, but um, I do enjoy doing them. But there's, I don't know, it takes, it. it it's fine. It's part of the commitment, so. Yeah, the Tron is awesome. Just hanging out there, looking all Tron-like. Old Vat design Altelier is going to go old school. Old Vat, old 69 Speedmaster. Yeah. Well, the problem with old things is they're old. So, like, old watches are old and they need work. Case in point, this one isn't even that old. I guess it's 20 years old, but it needs work and it just had work done to it. And old cars are the same way. They rust, they corrode, they, they break, and they just never stop. So... Personally, I like new shiny things, so I will constantly flip and just buy new. Um, you know, my Seiko Monster is the longest running one in the group, and that's been like, what, six years or something like that? Florida cars don't rust or grow. Yeah, they get some salt on them. If you want absolutely no rust, you got to go west. 
What do you think's in those oceans? Salt. They rust. You don't fool me. You have to stay away from the ocean to keep the rust off them. Uh, let's see. Your Celine is 20 years old, no rust. Yeah, because you keep it in a garage. You probably have it surrounded by those. I don't have any of those. What are those little moisture packet things? I can see Dane in his garage probably has like huge like economy like commercial sized of those like silicone packs that absorb moistures and uh, I don't know if you filter the air too so the salt doesn't get to it that's your baby the Celine's like in this bubble <laughs> well I'm gonna come down and see you and hopefully we get to check out the Celine I'll be down for Christmas Keeps it in a shoebox. No rusty or rust. Well, when I retire, I'm not gonna have a I'm not gonna live in the rust belt. I just turned 45, so 13 more years. At 58, I am retired. I'm done. I'm not staying in Michigan for the winter. I may not even stay in Michigan, period. But I don't know if I'll go south. I do like the heat and the humidity. Oddly enough, but I also like the dry heat in the desert, so maybe I'll bounce around. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point, Dane, yeah. Nobody can drive those things up here past pretty much November at the latest. Luke, you're on the east coast of Florida. Oh, man, I'm not going to go to the east coast. I'm going to be on the Gulf side. But Florida's what, like two miles wide? You could probably just bop over. Moab, Utah. I'll be out. You know what? I just kind of found out. I, I'm going to probably be taking some trips out to uh, Nevada, Utah area soon. I think my parents are moving out to uh, Nevada. So probably have to fly out there occasionally and see them. Two mile wild. Yeah, it's only... Well, it, well two miles. It's not two miles. It's... So it's obviously wider than that, but um, it would take like 20, 25 minutes. No, it doesn't take three hours. In your Celine, it takes you three hours? Come on. Rob's not ready for the East Coast. Well, it depends. I've done East Coast. I've done, the, I've done Miami. I've done South Beach. I've done even down to the Keys. Like three. So I've driven three hours by mistake, you know, Driving three hours across the state, that is no big deal. You guys live on a peninsula, and so do I. So, like, for me to go anywhere, I'm up towards the top of the peninsula. Is It would be like Terry, you know, living down in Miami and having to drive up to Georgia or something like that. How long does that take? That takes, like, what, six hours? That's, like, what it takes for me to get the heck out of my state. Yeah, you know what? I have not been out. Steve, I have not explored Colorado at all. Let's see. Yeah, fl driving around Florida is pretty, pretty fun. There's a lot to do. So, hold on. Um... Uh, California Life asks, do you know if Mimo's jewelry was affected by Long Beach's huge protest? No, I talked to uh, Mimo the whole time that was going on, actually. A good question. Um, so the police there actually told most of the business owners there they have to leave. If you want to empty your store, empty your store, but you have to leave. So Mimo emptied a store, which he was kind of in the process of doing a, a remodel anyway, but he emptied a store. So when the protesters came through, they didn't mess with his because basically they looked in the glass and it was empty. So um, he had no damage and now he's back up and running. And everything's fine. So and he's got a ton of new Seikos in. As soon as he gets some over to me, I'll do videos. But yeah, you guys can buy from Mimos right now. Um, he's shipping. He's actually shipping because USPS, If you, I do a lot of shipping and I haven't had any problems, but there's been some delays with the USPS. So Mimo's actually going to be shipping, I think, via FedEx, maybe UPS. So he's not even shipping USPS because he's lost a couple watches or sent, being sent to him he's lost or something. So 
he's even switched strategy on that to make sure that when you buy a watch from him, he wants to make sure you actually get that watch, not a, you know, insurance claim because the, the watch was lost. So, all right, guys, I'm going to peter out. We did, we did an hour. I was, a, I was really only prepared to do like a half hour. I'm just so kind of strung out. So I did an hour. I'm going to chime out. I'm going to close you out with a loom shot because there's a lot of loom going on here. Um, well, there is a lot of loom going on here. But the Borealis is going to perform well. And then, of course, the uh, the loom monsters are going to perform well. But I appreciate everybody chiming in. I think we had a good chat. We talked about a lot of things. None of them matter. But there's loom. We have loom. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next video.